Hi, this is James Pickering. Welcome to my second blog. Um, I'm continuing with the Counterlines theme, um, so I might make this a bit of a series. Um, and today we're, we're going to look at the um, Q Tyler in Kitchen. Um, so I think this is one of my favourite cues of the film, actually. Originally, it had a bunch of synths on it, as well as strings. So I'm going to... and. Um, but in the film, we just used the solo strings, that kind of, and it worked better with the scene, to be honest. So both are actually on the soundtrack. Um, I'll, I'll play you the whole lot, and then we'll strip it down. You can see each what I'm doing, and you know, I'll play you the string soloed and the rest of the stuff, and um, how I made the sound. So let's have a listen to the cue. So, uh, there you have it. Um, I, I can't remember whether I started with what I started with, actually. Ah, oh, I think I started with that melody, that da 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 thing, um, and then I kind of worked on the strings, maybe, but it could have been a synth. I have no idea, to be honest. But let's listen to the strings, and you can see what's going on with the harmonies and the melody. Um, yeah, strings. Strings first. So they're quite obviously uh, synth strings and not real strings. And I should mention, um, I should give a massive shout out to Q Strings, uh, Laura, Ellie, Jess and Amy. They're a fantastic string quartet that I've known for a long, long time. And when I was in a band, they played on a couple of records that we did. Um, and they're there just look them up they're amazing and also mike thorne at rimshot studios who mixed and mastered uh this soundtrack he mastered it for the lakeshore release and yeah mixed um mixed it for the film itself um yeah fantastic engineer absolutely fantastic um so look up rimshot studios as well that's in kent and his assistant josh josh holland awesome um anyway so th this whole this whole soundtrack actually i i wanted to kind of do chords in seconds and sevenths fifths and fourths and things like that just to add a bit more um maybe uncertainty so, something that wasn't so solid i guess um i don't know why it was just something i had in my mind and it seemed to work it seemed to fit the imagery so in this i don't know if you, you notice but the, there's the first melody and then the violin it, uh, plays the opposite, plays a delayed version of that melody. So what happens is, I'll just play it from here, and you should hear that the violin is going up, the cello goes down, and they're just playing a kind of canon, 
which is basically like a, like a round robin, you know, like London's Burning or something, um, where they're delayed. So have a listen and you, you'll probably pick it up. I thought that worked nicely. So, yeah, so then I, th I thought about harmonising it. Um, that was obviously triggered by the, the vibe of that, those two um, melodies working against each other in, in what you say, in, in contrary motion. So when one goes down, one, the other goes up and vice versa. So they're always working against each other in direction, which um, adds more... Um, more individuality to the to the line. So um, lines stand out more. So yeah, so basically these chords... So when, when I was harmonising it, the chords um, are in fifths and I'll probably jump to an image of the score. But what I'll do, actually, because piano roll is a notation in itself, isn't it? So it doesn't have to be a score. So look at this. Here we go. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, so here, G, D, A, B. So that's in fifths. So if we... Um, Go to here. So that's an example of the sound of chords in fifths. Uh, what you could say, quintal relationship. So it's quintal harmony rather than tertian harmony or tertiary harmony, which means by thirds. Quartal is in fourths, which there are a few chords in fourths as well. So it gives that it gives that sound, and then I used I used uh, the synths. So I mean, I guess let's run through the synths, see what the synths are doing. Okay, so let's solo the synths. You know what? I just thought what's really interesting about this. So in the in this in this scene, um, Tyler is going on a train journey out to meet one of the dealers who's going to give him the drugs, and he's going to start dealing. And um, I know we didn't use it in the end. Um, we used the solo strings, uh, just a quartet. But we were umming and ahhing about it for for some time. And this this kind of juxtaposed with this really sort of sci-fi '80s synth soundtrack. But it just seems to work. And it's almost like I guess it's like he's going away in this kind of ship, this unknown ship to unknown lands. And um, what's happening is horrific because he's being sent away. He's he's go he's going away to deal drugs. But this kind of mysterious '80s sort of Blade Runnery kind of thing going on. Um, which is kind of interesting, I suppose, just thinking about it. Um, yeah, I guess I haven't thought about that. Maybe I did. Maybe that was the whole point. I don't know. Anyway, let's listen to what the percussion's doing and the bass. So all these were kind of designed from scratch, I think. What have I got here? This is Zebra. This is the kick. Um, yeah, just like um, I, I love I love Zebra. Um, I got it specifically to do the score actually for for County Lines. Uh, and so yeah, I've just got a sine wave. It's it's detuned. 
well, it's tuned up, and then this envelope is immediately detuning it down a couple of octaves to give it that kick sound. And then I've got a couple of um, plugins on it, R-Bass, IQ, EQ, which I spoke about last week, which is like a dynamic EQ and EQ. Uh, it's really great. I offer German company, I believe, and um, Supercharger, which is Native Instruments plugin, which I really like. On it's a compressor and with a bit of like you know, you just, it's got punch and dirt. Okay, um, so yeah, put that in, and then uh, Splash. I just created a you know kind of a synth splash out of noise with um, long release ish. So just get the. And it's in stereo. Oh, look, let's see what have I got here. Yeah, so that's changing the cutoff, the high pass cutoff. So that's cool. Uh, and then this bass, I really like this bass sound. Um, what's this? So this is cool. Um, I don't know if that's a preset or something I tweaked or made, but I like it. Um, I mean, I like to I like to do my own sounds, um, but I'm I just don't think I pressure. If it sounds good, I, I'm not going to go and um, spend an hour trying to recreate the same sound and it sound worse. So that's that's a nice bass patch that is. And then I think I probably just this just a pad here. I mean, there's slight hints of Flash Gordon, isn't there? But anyway, we just stuck with the strings, didn't we? So, um, yeah. And then this is Iris. This is awesome. I love, I love this. I got this. I got like this for like twenty quid. Oh, I need to authorize it. For reason your computer. Um, yeah, but it's great. It's great. You just bong in a couple of samples and then mess around with them. I would look into that because I could spend like an hour talking about that. Yeah, so that's doing the same line as the cello and violin. I've got my old friend Form, uh, Zebra Bells, Zebra Bells. Oh my God, I, I love I love Zebra so much. I mean, it's just so versatile. Um, it's not really not that expensive as well, considering what you can do with it. Um, I've got the old Ebo. Is this an Ebo though? I don't know. I don't think I did use an Ebo. I think CL Kitchen Drone. No idea. No idea what that is. What's the original? I don't know what the sample is, but it's this sound anyway. Yeah, so it looks like I'm modulating it. Am I modulating it? Yeah, envelope one. So I'm modulating the amplitude of the... I think that's changing the form and... Can't remember. But yeah, just messed around, liked it, and I did it. Because it's... it's like otherwise you start second-guessing yourself, I think. Um, and I like to work fast. I like to kind of capture what I've got. Uh, dip. What's going on here with the dip? This is, this is like zebra fest. So frequency modulation, uh, sine wave, self oscillating. So that's when a sine wave um, kind of oscillates differently against another sine wave. Then it, uh, it's frequency modulation and it, it creates um, a different shape in the sine wave and then that obviously gives a different sound to your a bog standard sine wave so that's this Ooh. yeah like it 
Um, so that's kind of it. But again, if you've got questions, then just get in touch. If you want to see more, I, I don't know. I mean, let me know if I'm not delving in deep enough or I'm just going completely off piste. Um, but, you know, I could talk about music all day. So I'm just trying to gauge if I'm being too conservative for the time or you want some sort of two-hour epic. Yeah, thanks for listening. And... Hopefully you'll be there for the next blog or the next video I do about something. Uh, I imagine I'll probably keep with the County Lines thing for a bit um, because I really like the film and um, how the score works with it. All right, take care. All the best. Bye now.